Welcome guys, today we are going to be demoing and testing the new Devilbus DV-1 clear coat gun. In this video I'm going to be putting it head to head against some of the biggest competitors in the industry, including the Iwata WS-400, the SADA 5500, and the Devilbus GTI Pro Lite. Now this gun has some pretty big shoes to fill if it intends to blow away the competition, so I put it through its paces with some mid solids and high solids clear coat to see how good it can lay down the clear. Right off the bat, I was really impressed with the textured finish. I've used this gun for a little bit, and I've noticed that the textured finish, contrary to what you might think, cleans up easier than the finish on the GTI Pro Lite, the SADA 5500, or the chrome finish on the Iwata WS400. When it does have um, thinners on it, though, from the gun cleaner, it is a little bit slipperier than the other guns, but for whatever reason, the finish doesn't seem to hold dirt, dust, uh, extra overspray and stuff quite as well as the other guns, so I really like that about it. I was also really impressed with the machining of the air cap. It seemed to thread on the body of the gun really nicely once I got the hang of it, and the ratio of turns to get it off seemed just about perfect, unlike my Iwata, which you really have to thread on uh, quite a few turns to get the air cap to fully seat. Without further ado, let's get to spraying some clear with this awesome looking gun. So the first clear coat that I'm going to be putting through this gun is our production level clear. It's made by AXO and it's the Lessonal Pro Air Slow Clear. Now this is kind of a mid-solids clear coat. It doesn't flow out as nice as some of the higher end clears, but it's not horrible either. I usually run it through my WS400 or my Pro Lite, so it'll be interesting to see how the DV1 handles it. We use this clear coat for most insurance quality repairs as it's the best clear for the money that we can get our hands on, and it's perfect for this Carmen Ghia. Right off the bat I noticed that it was really slow. Um, this wasn't a gun. You can see I kind of slow down after I start right at the bottom of the door. I kind of realized, whoa, I <laughs> need to adjust my speed here. Uh, this isn't really a gun I can just right off the gate just smash it on like I can with the GTI Pro Lite. Um, I did also notice that it uses a fair amount more fluid uh, than the Pro Lite does. But uh, I'll let the video play here and you can kind of see how it, the gun wets out of different panels and kind of how it goes. Uh, this particular job I was trying to kind of pump it on a little thick, get it to flow out. It's a slow clear, so I was letting it kind of relax as it, you know, after it was sprayed. And you'll notice that as I put on the second coat, I really slow down and just try to get it to lay out as, as smooth as I possibly could with this clear coat. Um, so that's just a disclaimer. I was not trying to match OEM uh, PLR quality uh, with this gun on this job. So.
now I'd like to take a quick moment and compare the air caps of my main contenders for the kind of most used clear coat gun. I won't say the best because they each have their pros and cons. So this is the new DV-1 with its um, somewhat similar air cap design, I want to say, to the GTI ProLite. The fluid tip on it seems to be made a little bit more precisely, and I'm not sure if the machining of the air cap is done a little different than the GTI. Um, the body of the gun almost seems more like it's um, CNC machined. I'm not sure how the guns are really made, but uh, they both weigh about the same. The GTI Pro Light might be a slight bit lighter, but I did notice also on the GTI, kind of the air cap design and such sticks out more from the trigger. Not really a bad thing, it's just the characteristics of the gun that I noticed. Um, the air caps, when compared side to side like this, actually look to be very similar in design, although they spray completely different, which is interesting. Um, the GTI is a much faster gun seems to be a little bit more precise in the fact it doesn't flow as much material at once, if that makes any sense, and there's just less wastage. The WS400 um, here is totally different. There's not really very many similarities in the air cap design other than there's air and paint that comes out of it, um, in essence. Um, the WS400 moves a lot more material than either the GTI Perlite or the DV1 clear coat does, but I feel that the Peel, the orange peel control isn't as precise with the WS400 as it is with the GTI ProLite. So that's kind of uh, noteworthy. And then this is the Behemoth, the, the SADA 5500, which is a heavy gun, uses a lot of material, and it's very uh, picky as far as what it makes look good. And the 5500 is definitely my go-to gun for my ultra high solids clear coat, which I'll show later on here in the video. But the air cap design on the 5500 is made of brass, which is interesting. So it is a little bit heavier, but the body of the gun itself is what I think most of the weight difference is. Um, but all in all, they're, they're all three good guns. They just have their pros and cons, and um, not one really is better than the other. Actually, I should say all four now, because the DV-1 is obviously in the arsenal. <laughs> So next, I'm going to put another round of clear through the DV-1 clear coat gun and move on to this 2003 Silverado SS and Arrival Blue. Uh, for this test, I used our Ultra High Solids clear coat, um, which is a, it's a two to one clear, but it's a kind of a different application technique. This is more of a wet on wet, whereas the first coat is like a dry medium coat. And then you just um, pretty much top coat it immediately without it tacking up uh, to get that full flowing coat effect. From there, it is baked at 140 degrees for half an hour to get it out of dust free. It is a slow clear, but it works really good on completes. Anyhow, just watch and see how the gun lays down this clear. I thought it did pretty well, but I'll let you guys be the judge. Yeah, for the high solids clear, this this gun worked great. I had no complaints with it. It did, you know, it used a, quite a bit of material, but then again, so did my SADA 5500. So, in that, you know, realm, when I'm just trying to get the 
best possible outcome without necessarily being super concerned about materials used. This gun, it works well, especially for the high solids clear. The T20 Pro Lite, uh, that's, I usually stick that more for uh, mid solid stuff. Um, just what I found works best with the particular products that I'm using. So here's a video spraying the same Pro Air Clear onto a different project using my Devilbus GTI Pro Light. This is the second coat of clear. I'd already laid down a pretty nice wet coat and waited for it to tack up. As you can see, the fan pattern on the Pro Light is a lot narrower than the DV1. Um, actually, it's narrower than the DV1, the SADA 5500, or the Awada WS400. But that doesn't really matter, it still sprays great, it just doesn't put out as much fluid, which I kind of like, it's a little bit more controllable, uh, I find I get less runs and accidental uh, heavy spots with this gun than any other gun I own, so that's why I kind of go to it so much, especially on these bumper covers and smaller parts, it's really just super good. Here's using my WS400 applying the same Pro Air Clear onto a 74 Corvette I painted a while back. You can see with this gun, the actual fan pattern is much taller. It's a huge fan pattern and it really just pumps out the material, which is great for a restoration quality job such as this Corvette, where who cares about the orange peel because it's ultimately probably going to be cut and buffed or left really nice and shiny. It's not like you're trying to match an OEM fender that's right next to the panel you're painting. And then finally, this is the SADA 5500. So what are my thoughts on this gun? Well, given the price point of the GTI Pro Lite compared to the DV1, I would say probably go with the GTI Pro Lite. And that's what I was originally going to say at the end of this video, was that this gun ultimately probably isn't the best thing for most painters unless you're in a high, uh, unless you're in a premium shop that's using a lot of high solids clear. And I think that would still stand true. So I decided to give this gun one more go because honestly I wasn't super impressed with it at first test. And I had a pretty sweet uh, 67 to 72 body style cab that needed some touch up slash re-clearing and I figured I would use this with a different Lessonaw clear which is a universal clear which uh, for those of you who use these products it's a three to one to one, so it's not really mid solids and it's not really high solids, but I can get away with an extra slow activator 
just like I can with my high solids, and that is where this gun really excels. With this clear, I was able to get the roof of the truck cab to lay out almost like glass, and it really, it, it wouldn't match any sort of OEM orange peel whatsoever, but for these high, kind of high caliber restorations that our shop is doing, I think it really does work well. So, it's certainly less expensive than the SADA 5500, and it lays out the high solids clear better, I think, smoother at least, than the GTI Pro Lite. So, I'd say yes, it is, it is worth the price for the gun, but it ultimately depends which kind of clear you're going to be spraying. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video helps to make you a better painter.